To do green chemistry and sustainability, you can't do that. You've got to know about environmental health sciences and all of these other things. But you know what? If you're a scientist, you just can't be superficial. You have to go and read that stuff and really get to know it um, and talk to the people who do it and find out who, who really get intuitive about it. And that mean, it's extraordinarily multidisciplinary. It's going to be hard for us, but it, but it is wonderful. Um, and so this is how we figure it out. Uh, Pete and, and Ka uh, Karen O'Brien here of Advancing Green Chemistry got a group of world leaders in green chemistry and environmental health scientists together. And we've been talking on the phone for a couple of years to produce an assay protocol so that we could figure out how to tell what was or isn't to the best of our... Now, we don't have the answers, we have the protocol. So you can make a compound, test it with the protocol, and see if you think it's an endocrine disruptor or not based on the science. Um, but it gives us, these, these catalysts give us fire and water. Um, so here's how, here, this, is, this is them actually working, the way I vision them actually working. That's the parent catalyst, doesn't matter if you don't know what, it's just a molecule. And we'll simplify it to the iron atom and the nitrogen atoms and the stuff that holds them together. And then what happens is put it in water, it binds the water, but the waters fall off and in comes the hydrogen peroxide. And then the hydrogen peroxide loses that water and that goes away. And then in comes a substrate. Now a substrate's a molecule that that's going to burn. And you don't know, you probably don't know what molecules look like, so we'll use a football for the molecule. In comes the football and gets changed. And then in it comes again. And this is going on thousands of times a minute. And you're basically changing the football. And then after a while, the football comes, in comes the football that's already been hit once and it's deflated because it's now got a bunch of, of hits. And on that goes. And then over time, you're breaking that football down till it's shredded. And you get little pieces of the football that are now tiny little molecules that aren't toxic. That's how it works. So what's the football? The football is dyes, pretty much any dye. Pesticides, a large number, not all. Drugs, a lot of the major drugs that are the problem compounds, including ethanol estradiol. Now, one, one of the critical things is that the science must be commercialized. And it might, hopefully will be used to treat water. Um, and actually the performance is truly extraordinary and it's been tested um, at Brunel University in combination um, with the, a really huge water company uh, in England, Seven Trent, um, and with the water industry of uh, uh, Great Britain. And they're very impressed with the performance. So now it's just a can we do it cost effectively. Yesterday, the, the water industry put 60,000 pounds into uh, another year of testing with the idea that of this work we go straight to the pilot plants. If we get through the pilot plants we go to the water system. That's where we are. Explosives, things that last in the environment for decades are destroyed uh, by, the, by the system. In minutes, disinfectants, phenols, which are big problem chemicals, it's commercialized in laundry applications. Smells, hormones, uh, critical things endocrine disruptors and, and pathogens. And um, I'll talk a bit about the pathogens because we have some senators here and the Senate Heart Building was struck by anthrax. If, you, you, if the Heart Building gets struck again, you're going to use my catalysts. So the end game is really the commercialization. You've, you, we want these things to be, be commercialized. It, it is commercially available, the prototype catalyst. Each one of those has about um, 100 grams in. A kilogram of that catalyst would treat about 25,000 tonnes of water um, and with new advances that we've, we've made, it, you can take the 25,000 tonnes to a much, much higher number. Um, and we want to kick those footballs over the, over the goalposts and get them commercialised and get some money into Carnegie Mellon and, uh, so that we can build sustainability and sustainability science in particular there. But we started with people and we're going to end with people. Uh, we have the most amazing students. And I can only talk about a few of them for the time, but this is Siam Setgut Sengupta, who, Siam, what Siam did is he took pentachlorophenol. Now, this is a problematic molecule. Pentachlorophenol was used as a disinfectant throughout America and the world, 
It was used as a wood preservative throughout America and the world. It's all around the place. And people think that a good half of the dioxin in the environment comes from the photochemistry of pent pentachlorophenol. Um, it'll last for years in the environment. So Siam took about a thousand equivalents of it and for every catalyst molecule, put it with hydrogen peroxide, and in nine minutes, there was no pentachlorophenol left, there was no dioxins made. You blew the thing to pieces very quickly. And this is um, Anindo Ghosh, who did an amazing amount of things. He's an assistant professor at the uh, University of Arkansas. Siam's running a big research group in Pune, India, at the National Chemistry La Laboratories, uh, uh, understanding how these things work. Large, uh, uh, ser serious uh, awards in all cases with these kids. And Melanie uh, Vrabel, who's uh, in the audience, Melanie discovered that Tamil peroxide can break down ethanol estradiol and estrogens in general. And in our lab, we just didn't have the technology to really follow through on the exquisite analytical chemistry that you have to do to, to uh, prove that. And so Nancy Chappelle led a group at the Agriculture Research Service in uh, Fargo, North Dakota, and was able to show, oh my gosh, you, you obliterate all of these estrogenic pro uh, compounds were really quickly. Um, but it's more than just estrogen, which you can, uh, ethanol estradiol, consider as a drug. It's lots of the drugs. Um, uh, Arani Chanda has, as you can see, lots of awards, and Arani Chanda is now um, a very successful uh, scientist at the ISI Institute. Um, Dabashri Banerjee did the, the chemistry showing that these catalysts can kill spores. And what happened here is the military target for killing spores, the military goal is that you'll get what's called a seven log kill in 15 minutes. That means if you have a solution with 100 million spores per milliliter, you do the treatment and 15 minutes later there'll be 10 left. You must have some to parameterize in time. So that's an un uh, 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 one milliliter of um, uh, 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 10 to the 10 to the 8 uh, spores would kill Washington enough to, to wipe out Washington. It's a very, very toxic stuff. It's a catalytic poison. So this is what, what Debashri did, and it's uh, the only real data I'll show you. Um, bacterial spores are the hardest things to kill. We couldn't work with anthrax, but we work with Bacillus atrophius, which is a, a very good surrogate. It doesn't have the machinery for the toxin, but it has basically everything else. Uh, the hardest things to kill. And so this is what the spore looks like before you treat it, and this is what it looks like after you've treated it. And its innards have squirted out, it has swelled up, um, and it's truly dead. This has been tested by spore, the technology's been tested by spore leaders, and you, there, you know, it's not, uh, you can kick and punch that uh, living thing and make it look sick, and, and then you can give it some some good stuff and it, it'll get well again. Uh, and so the question was, have you really killed it? Well, all the tricks that bring spores back don't bring this back. And so we had 10 to the 8 uh, colony forming units per milliliter, um, and we treat it with peroxide and a little bit of a detergent. Um, and so whereas when they treat that heart building, they put a tent on and they put in chlorine dioxide, didn't work. They put in chlorine dioxide again, didn't work. Then they missed it in 35% hydrogen peroxide and they still found some spores. So they missed it in again. And then they declared victory. What you do now, I think, is you would mist in uh, peroxide, and you'd mist in the catalyst with it, and a little bit of the thing, and it'd be over in, a, in an hour or two. That's the seven log kill in 15 minutes. That's all it means, with a tiny amount of the catalyst. Uh, this is Jesse Miller, who's here, uh, who, who did great work on killing bugs. And this is Long Zhu Shen, who's here. And Long Zhu is really the world's expert in breaking down drugs. And here's a really important thing about a molecule. You think that we worry about the toxicity of the molecule. But once that molecule gets out into water in the environment, all sorts of biochemistry goes on to break it to, down to other molecules. And their environmental health properties are also important. Using Tamil technology in a matter of an hour or so, you can, you can the, the, developing the protocols takes a while, but really quickly you can break things down and you can see what they go to. And it does, because it's mimicking the enzymes, it does metabolism. You're seeing the metabolites as well. You break things down and you can see if, if you're breaking a big molecule down and it stops somewhere, you'll see it. And then you can ask the question, is that a serious environmental threat? 
Uh, and this is uh, Shoman Kandu, who's, who's uh, a very unusual as a graduate student, um, lecturing for me in, my, me in my stead in New Zealand and in India at prestigious institutions. Um, well, that brings us more or less to the end. Th the, with the compass, the green side of it is, is better. The, the orange side, true north is excellent, true south is terrible. The orange part is bad. This is what happens. To stay up there, you've got to reduce, summarizing, toxic elements have to be reduced or managed. If you just release them, you've got problems. Persistent molecules have to be reduced or obliterated. Tamils can obliterate things, including many persistent molecules. Here, they're not. Uh, they're released and not treated. Developmental redu disruptors reduced or obliterated. On this side, mechanical degradation is avo avoided. Mechanical damage is ongoing in the bottom. My Macroscopic pH change is avoided. You go changing the pH of the oceans the way we're doing, we're going to kill them. We're, we're taking the oceans um, and we're doing the following. We're heating them, we're acidifying them, we're killing them, and we're filling them. And just remember that um, there is absolutely no doubt about global ocean rise. It's about nearly one and a half inches a decade. And if you happen to be a country like the Maldives, or the Kiribati Islands, you're disappearing now. If you happen to be Bangladesh, you have a country about the size of Pennsylvania with 150 million people there. And most of that country is below the 10 metre mark and much of it is, a, is one or two feet above water. We really have to deal with the CO2 issue. Temperature change is avoided, temperature change agent releases are ongoing. Well, this is who helped us. I especially want to mention the Heinz uh, endowments. Um, this is our city. Taken from the highest building. On, it's a cloudy day, unfortunately. But it's a, it's a beautiful city. Um, and part of the reason that's so beautiful is Teresa has uh, helped 